All right, BLG going for Lucian Nami into, into Senna Kench. They're giving Senna Kench again. They're saying, hey, it's not that strong. Guma doesn't look particularly good on it, and I agree. All right, I'm not actually scared of this pick. I don't think that we that you need to force it out of their hands because by letting them take it, you basically get whatever you want out of the draft. In this case, they get it, they're getting Lucian Nami. Expect to see lane swaps here. Try to get out of the situation. They don't want to go for trades level one. Tom Kench is going to be the strongest out of all of them. Nami can get four man uh, ebb and flows in these in these positions, but you Senna can get a little bit too much chunk in return, right? And Senna's going to be stronger than Nami over time. Uh, so expect them to lane swap and try to get Lucian Nami to level three and then to swap back. Uh, lane swaps also are particularly insanely strong against. Twisted Fate, if there's one reason that they don't want to go for, for a flex, it would be because Bin on his signature jacks would also be good into TF. But honestly, like looking at late game counters, there is no harder counter pick, right? The fact that you can completely ignore the thing that Twisted Fate needs to do, which is yellow card you, you say, nope, I shrug it off, that doesn't even hit me, and I can continue the fight on you whenever I want, especially with these on hit AD builds that are dealing less damage with the Q. Uh, it's, it's just not close. All right, so here we go. Lane swap. TF is going to get completely bullied here. Jax will have to play weak side for a bit. He's going to try to hide. Notice where he's hiding right now, guys. Look at this. See how he's hiding right behind that wall? He's trying to soak up and leech the experience without giving anything back. Now, I don't like what he's doing here. This extended trade is no good. Uh, if there's one thing he's trying to do, it's trying to draw this minion aggro. That minion aggroing means that his min the red minions are going to fight in, come in a little bit faster, make it a little bit easier for him to do it, but it's at the cost of some amount of HP and Senna stacks. Uh, now, she only got one. Somehow in that iteration, only got one stack, which is less than expected and less than, than you need. Honestly, Senna should have gotten more there. Now, Zeus rotating over away from the 2v1, coming down. We're going to see Lee Sin go as well. This is a three camp into bot side clear. So we're going to have level three, potentially all three level three. This might be too early for them to be hitting three right now. Zeus leeching some of the experience, so they I don't think they will. And BLG uh, Bin realizing that he needs to step back. He's going to go all the way back over here, check into that bush, make them wonder what's going on, force them to use four people's resource to maybe get something. Yeah, they're going to get this plate. This is the D the turret that doesn't have fortifications, so you are going to chew through it, but Lucian's going to do just fine on his own, pushing to this side. Now, is it going to be a Tom Kenji answering to top like it normally is? Bin does step out, but they're actually setting a trap for him. Uh, if he can bait any amount of extra time here, he does have access to his jump. The fact that he's baiting that time, good, but they're also just clearing the wave on this side of the turret, so no no big issue there. And uh, now they get to proxy farm. This is something that we haven't seen in adaptations from lane swaps. We haven't seen these 3v1 bot lanes proxying and especially killing waves in these two areas. You can, right? Why not? This is something that top laners, if you guys are familiar with Alois NL, he is uh, the best top lane solo queue macro coach that he'll talk through all those advantages, why to proxy, when to proxy, and bot laners just haven't really picked it up. A little execution mistake there. Hold on. Jax just died in the bot lane. Why did Jax die in the bot lane? We just saw that play in the top. We're, we're wondering why did... Why did they lose the Maokai over there as well? So two deaths here for for what is, is making me wonder what's going on. Talia coming over saying, I can push through this wave. I can also potentially stop this recall, but may not have perfect vision. Uh, is hoping to push this wave out and try to crash it before you can get a farmer back into this lane. So let's look at this. You're supposed to take aggro. Maokai should take it and then uh, use his W over someone else. So who's taking the aggro right here? The red buff, the red buff and the fact that no one else was hitting. Oh my goodness. That feels so bad, right? These guys are so good at planning this out and to have no one dealing damage at that moment. Normally that's the right call. That's what you want. Malkai even waiting till that turret shot's in the air before disjointing with the W, but reacquires it with red buff aggro because no one has picked it back up. That should have been Nami or Lucian able to take that up full health. Uh, they could have taken that resource, kept the Maokai alive. So instead we get a trade kill, and I didn't watch the, the kill on bottom against Bin. 
So T1 setting up okay for themselves, but now you're gonna start seeing Lucian and Nami rotated into the center Kench lane. This is where they are strongest. You're seeing Kurtz's Shard being picked up by Lucian. This is the most aggressive laning item you can get. Also refillable potion, and he's got the biscuits, right? So he wants to take over the game at this stage. He's saying, I'm going to be strongest right now. We're gonna take a lot of trades. We even see the rotation from Zun and from elk all right flash into flash w he moves him back i like how they go for the knock up at the same time uh that can be a little bit improved right both players thinking the same thing i want to push you in this direction but no reason for talia to just not wait for maokai right you set up the whack-a-mole right here maokai throws you onto it and then the catapult springs you back all right faker saying i can get something back but getting hit by a sapling all right, this can be a kill back. No, it's on it's on Shun, so it's the minimum amount of damage against the Maokai. We get some chunk damage, but Elk survives with refillable and the biscuit going off just enough to keep them there. That might be that might be slightly triggering for T1, right? To feel like you're that close and to get to miss both of those kills uh faker faker perhaps had that window to cast the ultimate into malachi thought that the w and q was going to be enough there was no follow-up damage then throwing the r and, and missing the kill on lucian by that little as well all right here we go next dive we are low health nice little stun up there from nami you're gonna have a double a double ebb and flow but it's not gonna be enough to survive that good job by t1 now seno how come you're not continuing to hit this turret why why did we not hit that turret for another plate? I guess we'll find out in a moment. All right, so they got another half K gold lead for themselves. Void Mites though, Void Mites reign supreme. We're gonna see if this is going to continue through this game. Vagar, all the action on bot side means that they're going to be late. They cannot Cannot go for an answer here. Also, the fact that you moved Lucian Nami. I love that they're going back and forth, right? Back and forth, back and forth. Now you have Lucian Nami taking plates, killing Void Mites. You naturally have the pressure in mid because enemy team just played the play in bot. You're threatening these by proxy, right? Let's see how much they're able to get here. A little upfront damage from Lucian's calling. They get a big chunk of damage onto Tom Kench. That doesn't always stick. Vagar a little bit late on the rest of his combo there. That is Merc Treads, one of the best items you can get into Vagar. Not only are you less likely to get killed by the 100 to 0 combo, all three spells, but also making sure that that stun isn't long enough for you to be able to get hit by anything else. Now, Faker should be putting this on, puts the cage. Something you're trying to do in situations like that is cast a spell so that it won't get seen by your opponents, um, but is not able to dissuade them from finishing off that kill. Now, Tom Kench level six, so is Lucian. Lucian's going to be feeling very good in trades against the center right here. Abs absolutely goes for one. Senna is correctly hitting back and getting some more damage out and the threat of Tom Kench getting into the fight is obviously big, but with that bomby cinder being picked up, Tom Kench can't really go under the turret to harass because it's too easy to pick up the turret aggro. So he ends up stepping back in okay trade on both sides, a little bit to improve from each. I can't wait to see the rest of uh, this this Jax pick, right? If If you guys don't know, I mean, Bin, Bin is basically a Jax Camille two trick in solo queue, I believe. I, I mean, I don't know if that is still the case, but his solo queue account is I love Camille, and the first champion that he came up on to get recognized for pro was on Jax, and uh, that's always been his signature pick. Can't wait to see what he does in the in the end game. We've already talked about the interaction with Twisted Fate, being able to block all that damage. Also with Senna, right, making sure to to deny the extra propagation from her. Hold on, a little chunk damage. Not enough in return. We've got the Lee trying to bait things out. Lee Vagar should be able to make some plays for themselves. Uh, you see the Lucid Boots being picked up by, by Vagar. This is to continue the stacking. The tier I don't like. I hope this is not Seraphs. I will be very disappointed if it's Seraphs. Old Seraphs that had cooldown reduction on it was fantastic for Vagar. 
Uh, you have seen in the past, there have been some Vagars that are willing to go just here and then ignore it the rest of the way. But I just don't think you need to anymore, right? Dorne's Ring is strong enough. You can keep it through longer into the game. Uh, there is no like obvious great item for Lost Chapter upgrades for Vagar. You might say that Seraph's Embrace and the Shield is good enough, right? You just want the defensive stat. And that, you know, that would make sense. You're getting a decent amount of cooldown, but it comes at too much of an expense for, for your tempo. You're not getting enough of anything. It's too much on the mana and not enough on anything else, in my opinion. That's why I don't like it first on champions like Ziggs. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't get it on Syndra, you know, so why would you get it on Vagar? Is, is sort of my opinion on it. All right, plate going up. BLG has somehow taken the lead away from them here. Have you noticed? Senna only on 31 stacks. Would like to be at about 40 right now. We're going to see Maokai getting strong. It shouldn't be strong into a trade on Lee Sin, but because of the chain CC potential and the upfront damage from the Lucian, right? You don't want to have Maokai throwing them into a bubble. Plant, water, and light combo. Too strong. Too strong. All right, going for a big siege here. Three people on bot side. We'll see if Jax stays over. He's going to feel very strong into, especially the on-hit Jax here, or into the on-hit Twisted Fate. We'll see if he's actually willing and able to Q onto his face. Big upfront damage there from the coin. Tom Kench will shrug most of this off. He's early flashing to make sure that the Maokai never gets into range. But with the Void Mites, this means that we're going to have significant damage on the turret, even though that they lane swapped away from this, the strength of the Lucian in this position, this is what you pick him for, to be strong in this 10 to, 10 to 30 range of the game. And and really this, just the way that this champion has been playing, it doesn't, not, you know, it doesn't get outscaled anymore. Lucian's just exceptionally strong at all stages in the game. As fights continue on, that's when you can use his new passive to get those extra values on the on hit. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of this <clears throat> early static shiv into rapid fire and just using the extra like the extra on hit proc damage from these from these energized items. And then you might see something like Navori later, sometimes into a multiple tank team. You'll go into Infinity Edge, but I prefer the Navori blade, uh, Quick Blades build by a lot because that results in more passive shots and more passive shots. You're going to get more ability damage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, ult from Talia moving into the territory of Senna forces the heal. They're going to continue the tempo. They're up a full K. We'll see if they can get another plate down. They've already got the bottom turret, and they should be able to make a proactive move. It looks like they're going to try to give the Twisted Fate, and they do have a window for it. Zeus does not realize until too late he's going to be in trouble here. There's no good way out except with his ultimate. He ults to safety. Uh, this is You need to be very, very quick if you're, if you're trying to jump on a Twisted Fate. Like a rise, he's able to get out for himself a little bit longer range than the rise and they don't really show much for themselves they've got one lingering ward in the eastern quadrant and they gave up their opportunity to get extra plates for that alt cooldown on a champion that may not have been looking to use it anyways so it's um i feel like they could have done more with that they could have done more with that now one of the things that you're going to watch as a coach you're looking for mindsets. You're looking for strong for your team's mental. You're looking at mannerisms. Is this the player that I expect it to be, or do they feel like they're not themselves? How am I preparing for game four? It's very exciting to try to be a fan and to watch this game as a fan, but your job is to coach, right? And if you're the coach, you have a very specific task of how do I win game four? I can't change what's going to happen in game three. Once you're back in that room, there's nothing you can do to change the result of this game. So you need to start thinking about, am I down one, two? What side am I going to take and, and why? Or am I up to one? What do I expect them to do for a game plan and how do I counter it? Right. And in this case where you might be feeling like you're slightly ahead, you can start thinking, buy yourself some extra time and say, all right, how do I get the most out of this time i think we're winning how do i prepare and if i spend more time thinking about what it's like to be two and one and it becomes two and one then i might have an advantage going into the next game and certainly once you're on match point once you've got two two games under your belt 
only think about loss, right? It serves you no good to think about what a win is like. You've got all week to think about what a win will be like. Nice use of the Herald, by the way. They're going to crash it here to keep it in mid lane. Uh, use the Lucian Prio to kind of force them to stay in this lane for a little bit longer. But I actually would have liked to see the Herald brought all the way up to top lane. Try to get a little bit more. Try to force them to move, then just go for a full recall and then see if you can step up. So once you're down two games, then it's a different story, right? If you're down two games, you have to assume that, you've, that you're going to win. You can't do anything about the result of the game. You either win or you lose. If the series is over, it's over, and you can think about other things. But if you continue the series, you want to be the most ready for the series as possible, right? It should be very natural to think that way. Uh, all right, we do see the Seraphs completed right here. I do not like this from Vagar. It does mean that it's very hard to lock this champion down. It has a decent amount of ability haste on top of the Lucid Boots, but this is too much of a trough from my taste because you're also going to have to go for a zero utility Rabadon's item by your third item. And having two items that have almost no utility, uh, right, all that Seraphs is doing is letting you stack more and forever but it's not actually contributing to the rest of the game. And if you've got too many champions that are in that mindset, Senna's might be stuck in a similar spot, then you're sort of just seeding too much ground. And that might've been the idea in the draft saying, hey, we've got Twisted Fate we've, that, can, that will do fine in the middle game. We've got Vagar and Senna that have uh, very strong scaling. Maybe we can just use Lee Sin as the glue to give us a strong enough position to play for everything else. But Maokai can force fights. Talia can force fights. We have Talia paired with the Lucian Nami to wall off the back of the fight while Maokai is charging in, right? We have some very classic combinations here that, that will be accessible for BLG to try to win this fight. Nice ult right there going through that avenue. Do they get any amount of chunks here? That calling maybe could have been a little bit better. Oh, the flash backwards back gets hit. Means he still gets chunked out. There's the Seraphs coming into effect. I don't think he would have died anyways. Although without the shield, they might have been in range to go for flashes forward. So would have been close. But now with that, with those resources gone, we see teleport heal from Vagar using the summoner spellbook. 172 stacks. Is this going to be Cosmic Drive right now? Sometimes we, uh, we have seen Lich Bane, the extra move speed being a huge part of what makes Lich Bane so good, and also your ability to siege onto turrets, hitting for that much extra AP. Uh, sort of a hidden, unlocked source of damage from Vagar is that big Lich Bane proc because of the high AP values you have. He has really good synergies with AP ratios, which makes sense. All right, Vagar cage being used, but really there was no forward pressure. It didn't need to get it down. It's telling his team, hey, I'm just dropping this so we can move and reposition ourselves. But I don't know that they couldn't have gone a little bit further. Are they going to just seed the dragon? Say there's no wave to push for right now. They're not actually going for it. They are going for the Maokai ultimate. They are going to space themselves just fine. Uh, if anyone gets hit, it's Tom Kench, but nope, no one gets hit. They do move them out. Now they get Pryo on the wave. BLG is going to retake this area on the transition point, the junction to the dragon. Right, so by pushing them out here, you sort of walling off these three ways in. But they don't actually claim anything for themselves. They do get some superior vision. Two wards here makes it much harder to get warded out. Also, you note that this one's out of range of a control ward here. Very important to do that. Uh, one of the spots that you need to look at control warding is this area, so you can control all of this as red team. Some people will get... I don't want to say lazy, but try to be really efficient and put a control ward here, but then you get spaced with that ward that we see that they've already placed down for themselves. Multiple uses of Pryo, Lucian using the culling up front. This is what he's so good at with the Nami in particular. Uh, ultimate force being forced out because the W did connect, but they do grab the dragon. And this is all just Lucian zoning, making that possible. Talia wall could be a threat in response. Twisted Fate just dutifully pushing. Jax is going to go for this fight. You see this teleport? He's got the spot behind him. That is on a control ward, so he will see him. A little bit early there from Bin. Using the E early. Normally you want to wait to pop that, right? You want to hold up the E or you only want to cast it as soon as the Twisted Fate goes into that animation, perhaps getting nervous that he was so close to him and he didn't want to get stunned for, for no good. But because he did it that early, it means that he is Twisted Fate's able to hold onto the yellow card, force the flash on the backside. And now we see some upfront chunk damage 
being used and uh and they zoned them out so okay from t1 they maybe could have gotten more from there we'll see if we get a replay from that you did have a big lead you saw bin being scared uh in that position forcing him to recall and teleport back in so check this out normally you want to wait the yellow card goes in you don't put the e on yet right that e's not doing any any value for you it hasn't amplified itself it hasn't gained any of the stats from being hit twice and there's nothing left there so you could have gotten more but with your flash down and getting chunked that was a moment where t1 could have gotten the maximum it looks like they got the minimum honestly minimum being that they just get a better reset and they get some decent timing uh this is something that we've seen shirelia from vagar this is something that we love to do on the channel hopefully you guys have had a chance to to see that in action um shirelia's is is a fantastic item guys you should you should be building it on on almost every champion that has ap like the extra movement the fact that it's so darn cheap the fact that it speeds your entire your team up when it's time when it's go time you get it in and it makes it so easy to just naturally build into a third item and get that third item a little bit sooner than your opponents because you built an item that costs 800 gold less than their second item uh, and that that combination means that this sequence of items makes it very very effective i expect that we're going to see rabadon's next from vagar uh, usually it's a mistake to get anything else because by that point with all the stacks going up you're looking at approaching 400 stacks and when you do you want to turn that 700 ap into a thousand ap all right maokai finds the angle this is a much better ultimate talia they do it they they weave through the lattice the perfect setup on the fight and they get it they get it for themselves good job from blg to find that situation They get the maximum. They get everything on that side. Senna and Lee Sin, the only ones left standing. They're limping on the other side of the map. No one's picking up this top wave. They do get the Scuttle Crab, which may be able to hold off the Baron, but probably not. 27 seconds here. They may say that, hey, we just want to shop. We just won a big fight. We've got two champions that have big shutdowns. Let's let them spend their money, and we'll come back later. Horizon Focus being picked up from Talia. We see the BF Swords from Lucian. So these champions are huge. We're seeing Magi's being purchased. I hope this sticks. Why? Hmm. I'm surprised that we have a Q here from Twisted Fate. Normally, often you'll see five points in E and W with nothing else, right? You just don't need points in the Q. It doesn't do anything for you. It does have the new AD ratios and you're going to be fine with it. It's not bad but like the value in the e is stronger all right blg let's see their ending technique they're ahead by two and a half k with lucian in the mid game lucian talia is going to be exceptionally strong expect them to push up into this quadrant and through here they're going to control this area on the map use it to try to axe these two inner turrets and leave lingering vision then they can do it again and try to get for the baron this is your standard two lane pushing sequence uh it took the league community about eight, eight years to get this right but they finally have it it's pretty it's pretty chalk you know it's written on the chalkboard it's there people can take notes uh this is the way to approach it four and one you go into these adjacent routes and you just wall off as much of this as possible with the threat from your team just being a little bit stronger correct answer is to take the maximum force right one one stronger in this lane and one stronger in whichever other lane you can right so if they put four in the mid lane and one on top the correct answer is one four right or one one three we say I'm going to take my best wave clear and just try to thwart your push by as much as possible. And then I'm going to take my three and try to engage somehow, somewhere, right? Get one point of, of coverage, right? It's like your landing spot. It's, uh, it's Israel or Vietnam for the United States. Sag. Uh, you want that one spot that allows you to pick a fight when you want it, right? So you're looking for a ward either here 
or here, something that might be behind them. You try to use this turret to be strong. You send the one person here, you send your numbers up and you try to deflect and try to use this turret as a stanchion point to get a little bit of vision out, which will allow you to teleport and use Twisted Fate to its full effectiveness. We have not seen the proactive Twisted Fate ultimate here, like we've seen the proactive Talia plays. Bin's actually flashing over saying, I've got this. I've got the stun on Vagar. The shield's not gonna be enough here. He's actually chewing through the shield, and we see that the Seraph's embrace is just Seraph's embrace is just not enough. Now Vagar dead. Vagar is their main zoning tool. They don't really have a way to stop the enemy team from engaging on them, short of that. Um, and and honestly, looking at this whole team comp, like what have we gotten from Lee Sin? What what you know, Lee Sin's just been a bystander in this game. We need to get more. We need to see more pressure. Hopefully, hopefully it's not a nerfs thing. Hopefully they're bringing their A game. I mean, they've they've been to the world champ. They've won the world championship, right? There shouldn't they shouldn't be afraid of a quarterfinals match against BLG, or should they? Because this BLG team is operating on a whole nother level right now. Three dragons to one. Lucian spike. You see that upfront damage. We do see the infinity edge being picked up. This is a testament to Tom Kench being on the enemy team saying, hey, like I'm going to have to chew through you. Jax finds the best angle possible. And that's what we see from these champions, these players who have supreme champion knowledge. It's not just about the mechanics, guys. It's about the knowledge of exactly which wards you can teleport. Where can I flash? Can I flash this wall and continue this kill? How likely is my team to continue? Uh, knowing those ins and outs and knowing the outcome of every possible sequence is where what's going to make you strongest. This is a red buff. This is a red buff, uh, Jax, by the way, hunting, hunting Twisted Fate. He goes for the steal. Nice little effort. Owner trying to get in with the Senna shield going off. The Senna cast time uh, being the big variable there can be difficult. It also doesn't hit... The Baron itself. So ideal situation is you get to dash in as the Lee Sin while the shield is resolving, kick the jungler through the rest of the team or as many other members as possible, and try to use those knockups as a window to try to get a smite window for yourself with the Q to execute value. But it's not going to be enough. Valiant effort, you know, it was mostly well coordinated. Twisted Fate Ultimate being used to get them as much information, but it doesn't go. It doesn't work for them, which means that they're just going to get chewed through on their own base here. Look at this damage from Elk. Popping forward. Pop, pop. Using the flash to dodge the Q from, from Lucian. We see the power of this champion. He's going to bite the dust here. But the job is done. Multiple kills in. We see the spikes finally come in. You see that Storm Razor and the Black Cleaver being purchased but it's going to be too little too late. They're down almost 10K now. The Jax is stacked. We'll see if we go for Spear of Shojin next. Get those extra cooldowns on the E, the extra damage on the rest of the combos. Vagar's hunting. It is Rabidon's coming out soon. This is a refillable still in, in the inventory, which is kind of interesting. You'd expect to see control words being purchased. Karyo trying to in for his team, but moving forward, jumping into the back line while Faker's getting popped, really accomplishing nothing here. They're the ones who banned the Nautilus, by the way. Maybe they're thinking that with Nautilus gone, no one else wants to pick Senna, and that's what's going to allow us to pick Senna Kench. And we can go for it. But this is all three games now that BLG has said, you're allowed to have Senna. Go for it. And honestly, why wouldn't they? Guma Guma's playing like a challenger level Senna one trick. It's like, it's fine. It's good. But it but it's not doing all the things that it needs to do to, to carry through these games. Right? You're not seeing that expression the way that we're seeing it on Lucian and on Jax, on Maokai, on Talia. All these champions, like literally all five champions on the side of BLG, you're seeing them played to their limit. And I just don't see that from Gumuyusi Senna. All right, 16 to 6, 10k, well, 8k gold lead. Pushing up. Baron's in tow for 13 more seconds. I like this play that they actually stacked up more waves on the far side. 
uh, Senna and Vega are moving together to crash that wave. But look again, remember we talked about this last game? When you leave a turret push like this, and now it's just going to stack up on the enemy team's side. They're stronger than you. Their minion wave is going to be a little bit stronger. It's going to be mostly even, and it's going to uh, land right around here. Then they're going to start stacking again. The next wave is going to come up as well, and it's going to continue pushing. And that wave will actually start stacking up and be a game-ending threat that someone on your team is going to have to answer. If it's intentional and you can buy enough time for someone on your team to pick it up, then it'll be fine. But in this case, it's, it's not even going to matter. That wave is going to be erroneous. The fight gets taken in the mid. I'll, I'll go back and watch this because, you know, we're talking about other things. Looking at the setup here, Talia Wall. The dragon, you really have no business fighting for anything. So Leeson actually coming forward on a Q2, stepping forward in early in the fight. The Talia walls off Zeus as well, has no flash and no ghost. So we're able to get the maximum here from this. Tom Kench does pick him up over the wall. That's something you can do. But Faker in a tough spot again. Team call, you know, mixed, mixed calls, right? You see people splitting off in two different directions. And again, you see Guma not contributing to the fight. And yes, you're losing. There's not much you can do. You're down by a tremendous amount. It's not that I expect much from you. But to do nothing is less than what I expect, right? And we want to get something in these fights. And we saw that last time around, we just didn't get enough in these fights. In game one, potentially decided by the fact that that Senna didn't hit a couple of times. And you got the, you got the bailout and the reset. And that's the difference between winning and losing sometimes. It's not going to be the difference right here, but I need to see that level where you're pushing that champion to the limit at the hardest moment. All right, game four, here we go.